and welcome to another episode of Fubar. Today we are working on the last part of our web application that is doing some kind of store magic. So until now we have shown a map and loaded some data from an API and we have basically been able to draw some stuff from the API in the map. We are able to navigate to the different positions that are stored in the API inside the map. We also created a road so we can put an address and then pick a destination and we will see that drawing in the map. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave you the links in the description box so you can watch the whole playlist because today we are doing the last part of this and this is all about sending events. So we are going to use location service. Location service is a new service from AWS uh, that allows you to add location features in your applications. And the feature we are going to be working today is the geofence feature. The geofences are areas in our maps that kind of uh, delimit like a place that we decide what is that place. And Using the location service and geofence capability, we can send events whenever somebody or something cross the border of the geofence, either enters the geofence or exits the geofence. I have done a previous episode showing how to do this. I have shown you how to send events of uh, location events in a regular format using the AWS CLI and then how to display them in a web application in ra uh, regular intervals. So in this episode, I want to turn it around and I want to show you how to send the events from the web application. So we are going to modify what we have now and we will add a little kind of thing that we can move around the map and if the pin is inside a geofence, it will trigger a notification and if it's not, it will not. And then you can do whatever you want with those events. So let's get started. So let's check what we have built in the previous episode. We have added these uh, stores that we have gotten from the database that we can click on them. They are drawn in the screen like little blue spaces. Uh, we have created this routing that we can put an address and a destination and we can see the road in the map. That's great. But now I would love to drag that little red dot and see if it's inside or not of one of these uh, shopping centers. So in order to add geofence, what we need to do is to go to the location services and add the geofence collection. So to add a geofence collection, we just create a new collection. We put a name, save the name in a clipboard, you will need it. And then uh, you will pick a pricing and it's very important that uh, you give this event rich configuration with CloudWatch because we are going to use it. And then basically you can uh, create the geofence collection. The next step is to add some geofences in this collection. And to do that, you can drag a geojson file. We have one in our project. And this project uh, is a continuation that we have cre created before, but you can find the links in the description box of all the code. So you can check it out there. But this geofence, we have it in the data uh, folder and we can basically open it in Finder and drag it into, uh, into that uh, area and bloop. Now we have the geofence. If you don't know how to create a geofence, there is this site called geojson.io. I'll leave you the link in the description where you can create a geofence. Basically, it gives you a map and you can draw areas in the map and that will create a JSON file that is in the right standard format of a geofence. So then you can use it here and also use it to draw in the map as we have done before. And now you have five Geofences, that means five areas in the map that are like with some names. These are shopping centers in the city of Montevideo. <laughs> so then what we need to do is to give permissions to the Cognito authenticated role of our application, of our Amplify application, to be able to uh, send messages to this Geofence collection. If you want to know how to find this role, in the first video, I show you, but I have it open from recording on million videos and I will create a new inline policy. The policies are available in the GitHub repo for you to paste. Remember to change the region, the account ID and the name of your geofence collection to the right ones. 
and then just put any name and we are ready to go to screen. Before going to the uh, code, let me know in the comment box below. Have you been following this series? Have you been building this? That's great. If not, why you have not started yet? Let me know all your concerns or your comments. I want to make more content on location-based. I have a lot of ideas and one idea I have is to automate the creation of all these backend resources that we have been created manually. Is that something you're interested in? Let me know if you would like to know how to create with CDK all the infrastructure we have created for this series. If so, I will make it happen. So now let's go to our code to the app.js and modify it so we can uh, basically drag a ping around and see if it's inside or not of a geofence. So the first thing we want to do is to add that collection name into uh, our constants. And then, and then we will use that search marker that we have for putting the address as a draggable item. So I'm not creating another marker. I'm going to make that marker draggable. And whenever we drag that marker, we are going to update that search marker. So that's what, what is kind of happening there. And for adding a draggable marker, what the only thing we need to do is an our marker, existing marker, add the draggable features, and then you need to put on drag end, basically on that event, that it calls that uh, that function that we just created, that is basically setting the um, search marker to the right latitude and longitude. This uh, application is very web, <laughs> very event driven. There is a lot of events here happening. So I hope it's clear, but now if we refresh, we can basically drag that drop around and it works. But we are missing one thing. What happens if the um, kind of dot gets inside a geofence? So we want to add another kind of hook that it's triggered when the event marker change. So when that marker changed the position, then we want to evaluate if this is in a geofence. And for that, we are going to call the uh, batch evaluate geofences. That is the function that we just give the Cognito user role permissions to. So what we need is here the collection name that you just created. And then basically we need to put a device ID. This is something that is up to you. You can put any name. And then we need to give the position, the current position of that uh, device. In this case, it's the search marker latitude and longitude from the map. And then the time that you want to make sure that it's uh, inside the geofence, in this case, now. And for that, we are going to use the client that we created in the previous video. Basically, it's a, a AWS SDK location client with the uh, credentials from Amplify, so it doesn't have much science. And then whenever we move the little dot, it will ask the backend, is this inside a geofence? And basically the backend will see if this is a geofence or not. And if it's inside, then it will say, hey, you just enter a geofence. And if not, it will not do anything. So let's look at this on uh, how it works. Let's go to CloudWatch and see the events that are being sent. Because I think this is uh, something very important. It's not tracking the location of the dots. So you can see it that it's only tracking whenever it enters or exits the geofence. So we can go to the log group and search for location. And you need to put the name, uh, if you have many, of this uh, geofence collection. And there you will see that we already have one event. And that event is the one uh, that it has entered the geofence of this Punta Carreta shopping center that we have created. And there it shows the position, shows the time, it shows the device ID, the one that I told you uh, before. And uh, basically it shows everything. So now if we take the dot out, we will see that a new event uh, will be happening. That is the exit of the geofence. But if we move the dot around in the map, uh, there will not be any other events because only the events are happening when an uh, object device enters or exits the geofence. So we don't know where the device is any other time. So this is important to know. This is not tracking like the, <laughs> the location. So this is good. And if we make it enter another geofence, we will see another message that it entered a new geofence. But all the movements in between these geofences are not 
tracking. So this is important. Uh, we have different uh, ways. If we want to track the location of an event, I recommend you to check the other video where I'm using a tracker. Basically, I, I'm, I'm sending location messages all the time and I'm kind of interested in the location of the thing. So I kind of tracking the location and that's being stored. But in this case, we are not tracking the location of this person. We are just basically sending an event whenever that person enters or exits a chief event. And that's very different. So for example, this is a great use case if you want to do marketing. So you have this person with the phone and the person gets inside the shopping center and then they might receive a push notification that, hey, today we have this sale and this other sale. In the other case, the one that I show you in the other video is great for tracking objects. So you have a package and you want to put a location or you have a track and you want to know where they are all the time. So in that way, you care about the location of the whole thing and not only when they reach a landmark, like, I don't know, your branch or your store. You want to know where they are in all the different points. So that's the different use case and that's why I wanted to make this video. And if you want to add um, any functionality, you can uh, add targets in Event Bridge. Event Bridge is basically the one listening to the events that are being sent by location service and then sending it to CloudWatch, the ones that we have been seeing. But you can add different targets. And I have shown you in the previous video how to do an SNS, basically sending an email to someone. You can also do a Lambda trigger. And I leave you a link uh, to another video I did for a workshop on how to do Lambda trigger. And basically you have all those options. So feel free to experiment. And basically with Lambda, you can do anything. But by editing these rules and adding more targets, you can add a lot of complexity to your application. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this series, you learn new things about location services, and don't forget to let me know. You want to have this backend fully as infrastructure as code and created as infrastructure as code, like all the location services, Amplify application and all that in CDK? Let me know. If that's the case, I will build it for you. And that's it. I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao.